Good morning, everyone. Got us a beautiful day here going on. No sun, all clouds. Feels phenomenal out. So what we're gonna do today in this video, we're gonna get started on pulling the drivetrain out of this blue car, get the engine swapped back over into our Silver Z. We also have to do our steering rack and all associated lines on the silver car. But first, what I'm gonna do is I've gotta work on my daily. Go fill up with gas last night while it's raining, get half a block down the road i throw a check engine light which i've never seen before on a z especially while it's running it runs like absolute crap i could barely sputter it and get it home which yeah that's not recommended whatsoever in case you do have water in your lines you don't want to hydro lock your motor i'm going to pull out our spark plugs at least four of them the easy ones we're not going to pull the balance to we're going to see what they look like make sure they haven't fouled out and we're going to see if we can get it to idle take it for a cruise and get everything sorted out so we've got all of our spark plugs out and they're all super sooted which is to be expected because the valve stem seal issue we're gonna clean them up throw them back in and see how she feels about it I'm a dummy and I lost this o-ring when I pulled the balance tube off and pulled this cool pack connector out well, I was at Harbor Freight earlier went to grab another telescoping magnet and I found this tool for battery terminals and it actually cleans them it was like less than five bucks so i had to grab it we'll see we'll have to probably pull the whole battery out for this but stupid cow panel always gets in the way of everything aside from our screaming power steering pump we got the terminals cleaned up we got the plugs clean reinstalled also fix our accessory wire there we got that all snugged up and on correctly now instead of the wires just being pinched in. Well, it's been idling for a minute. Yep, but safe to say it's up to 10. We're nearly there, so still no check engine line. A little bit of octane booster, a little bit of extra gas. Um, yeah, so fingers crossed because this really had me stressed out. So our first move with the Silver Z here is going to be to put a steering rack back in. A little worse for wear, it's completely busted, nothing about it's good. Every ball joint, every boot, everything's cracked, so that way we can turn the wheel, move the car around the yard, so then we can pull it up here and start to mess with it instead of it being all the way out here in the grass, because this is not, this is my least favorite place to be working on these. Now that the hood's off, we're going to find some brackets right here so we can mount our steering rack. We need to find bushings as well. We will also grab us a steering U-joint so we can hook this up to our rack. U-joint acquired. A little bit of change of plans. We're actually taking the steering rack out of this black car because this bracket, which I already removed, and this bracket, I'm having trouble finding because I have so many things that I hide things from myself and I end up here. Instead of me spending a whole day looking for it, decided I'm just gonna take it off of this car and we'll use it so we can get the ball rolling. Got everything unbolted. Both the outer tie rod ends are separated from the front knuckle. These two brackets with 17 mils have been removed. These two 10 mil brackets have been removed. We also have these two connections and 12 mil bolt right there to remove the steering U-joint from the steering shaft. So we're going to pull that out now and we're going to transfer it over to the other car. It's getting hot out here even though it's all hazy and cloudy. Here is our new rack. That's the original one. This one's been rebuilt. Looks way better. I think I'm going to sit it over to drain this fluid out so we don't have to make a mess when we're installing it. Wow, that was a pain in the butt to get on. But now that we have it at least set to where we need it to, we're gonna thread our bolts in to secure our rack. So then we can move on to the next step, which is getting the tie rod set, getting our bolt tightened here, and getting us a hose to loop this up. 
and we'll be fully hooked up on our power steering side. We'll be good enough to move this around the yard, yada yada, so that's super sweet. Now that our wheel's off, all we gotta do down here on both sides is to bend our tie rod over, take this castle nut and washer off of the tie rod, place it within the knuckle. We're just gonna tighten it snug, we're not gonna torque it. It's just to move the car around. Now, let's check out the cool part about doing all this. Now, I can do this. Now the wheel turns, except we gotta figure out our shift lock issue that's keeping the key in the ignition and keeping us from pulling it out. So we just got out from underneath of our daily. We also put a couple bolts in our manifold to test pipes, so hopefully we can get rid of some of this exhaust leak and make the car a little more tolerable to hear and drive. Sounds a little bit quieter. Still a little raspy. My first step with this engine is going to be we're going to do a power balance test, but we got to draw so the battery's dead. Also, we're going to pull each coil pack connector and verify that each cylinder is firing on its own as well. Well, I don't remember taking anything off of this. I don't know why it wouldn't start. Uh, I'm not hearing the fuel pump prime. Nope. Yeah, it's looking like everything's plugged in. Not what else it could be well I guess we got something else going on so instead of having this green relay in someone had a blue relay plugged in to the green connector so we're gonna switch this out and hopefully this will help kick our pump on oh, I still don't know not how I want today or tonight to be going. So it's the next day and it's officially time for us to start tearing down on our teal car. And here we are. So pretty much first thing we're going to do, we're going to start draining all of our coolant. So we'll be able to remove this easier. Well, I just noticed this lower hose is damaged and it's actually duct taped together to keep it from leaking. Wow. So let's pull the radiator all of our intake pipes, all of our intake piping in general. And we'll probably go ahead and pull our battery while we're at it. We've got to tearing it down. Got all of our wiring harness and nearly everything on the top side of the engine ready for us to pull it out. This definitely is not a Z radiator. I'm starting to think it's an S13 or S14 radiator. I guess I can check to see if there's two mounting tabs for the radiator. That makes me kind of think it's an S14. I know that they have the same side inlet and outlets, and this fan also, I believe, to be a KA fan. I'm not seeing a mount for a radiator here, so potentially it's for an S14. If you guys know, drop it down below because I'm curious to kind of know what I got. We're going to lift the car up, put it on blocks, and get to start pulling the exhaust, drive shaft, transmission I think that's it now the cars up on blocks it's time for us to check out one of the things I've been most curious to look at with this car we can obviously see kind of shape this things in similar shape to the black car 
except way worse. I've never seen one rotted out this much. It's rotted back in towards here, and all that's holding it together is the sound deadening and the paint. The rail is all rusted. This one is totally smashed. It's been totally smashed back there. Oh my goodness, and someone is using a rag for a steering rack bushing. Oh my gosh. What the heck? That is horrifying. What the heck? I don't even know what to say. I'm baffled, honestly. Really hoping we're gonna be able to get these couple of manifold bolts off. If all else fails, we'll just snap them. But I don't want to, because I don't want to have to drill them out. The rack don't look like it's leaking like crazy. Subframe looks nearly mint, like it's barely ever been lifted from. So, who knows, maybe we've got some good condition stuff here. Valve covers are leaking bad. It is dirty on the bottom side of the head, manifold, and grimy all down the block. Well, I've got about 30 minutes before I gotta leave to go grab some food for Gabby's birthday today and go take it to her at work. Snap all three of my manifold stud bolts. Cause you know, that's the only option down here, especially with the condition of this. And I start looking, we've already got some super sketch exhaust hanger mounts they're made out of bolts and are welded together and i just noticed this this is welded to the chassis regardless of how hard i kick up here i can't budge this exhaust and it took me a lot of effort before i realized down there that it's welded to the chassis we're gonna get an angle grinder or cutting wheel and we're gonna chop that off There we go. We got some movement now. Now <laughs> to see if we can even break it loose. Here's a very hideous exhaust. <laughs> Literally, about a straight pipe as you're gonna get other than the factory bins there. Here's a very hideous exhaust. <laughs> Literally, about a straight pipe as you're gonna get other than the factory bins there. Well, my dumb self totally forgot to take the GoPro, so <laughs> missed out on surprising her at her work. Uh, we'll get the exhaust and drivetrain all pulled first thing tomorrow. Reason being is there's a floor here that needs done, and that's what I used to do for a living for over five years. So we're gonna put a new floor in the kitchen. One time, this dog right here ate some dog food. He loved it, but he loved it so much, he decided to eat the floor and tear it all up. Some of this vinyl plank stuff, I'm gonna put over top. So, first things first, I'm gonna take a chisel and hammer. I'm gonna cut each of these door casings high enough so I can put the wood underneath. And you will keep it within an eighth to a quarter inch from the wall, depending if you're using quarter round or base shoot. To cover the gap if you want just you take your baseboard off and use your baseboard to cover it that's the best method the floor is all finished officially I was short four crucial tools to do the job so it took me like five times as long looks good though whole exhaust removed so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this here heat shield six ten mils there's four bolt or two bolts and four nuts and we've got a 14 mil for four rear bolts on the diff flange and a 17 or 19 mil here for the carrier bearing bolts and a 17 or 19 mil here for the carrier bearing bolts got our drive shaft out in our carrier bearing totally waxed it is incredibly hot and humid <laughs> the amount of force that i had to put on them carrier bearing bolts was ridiculous because of how rusted and seized they were even with pb blaster on them 
I got stuff all over me. I can just feel it. Every time I wipe my face, it's all gritty. So we're gonna sit down and dry off a second, and then we're gonna work on our shifter, trans mount, and bell housing bolts. Oh, now the trans is unmounted. We're gonna lower it down, start removing bell housing bolts, and pull this greasy thing out. Level this out so we can, oh, that's not supposed to fall out like that. Give it a little wiggle first. If that doesn't come out, we'll grab a ratchet strap, put it on the tail shaft of the transmission, hook it up to the sway bar subframe, and ratchet it off. came right off put it where the jack slowly decreases or lowers and we'll slowly pull the transition back so it doesn't get caught on the clutch just like that we have removed our transmission shifters off And we're going to raise the front of the car so we can scoot the trans out underneath the frame rail. Go figure, as soon as we get the transmission out, looks like we got a stinking tornado coming through here. Got one engine mount nut off, I've only got the passenger side left. And then we're going to discharge the AC, unhook our power steering, and she's ready to come out. We'll see what we can get filmed, if we can even get this done now or if we'll have to come out later this evening. And now we wait. Now that we're back down to ground level, let's get the car pushed and scooted in. And let's get to pulling this off. Well, as you can see, <laughs> car's officially in the garage. I gotta take a dry off break. The physically demanding part's over. Now we just gotta hook everything up and yank it out. But we'll get to that right after we go get chilled off. Issue number one, not really issue, you can see in that drain pan, that is not ATF, that is power steering fluid. Oh yeah, power steering fluid, it belongs in the power steering, that's wrong. On Z's it requires automatic transmission fluid, so who knows, this pump may not be any good unfortunately. I think we're all good. Now we just gotta pull it out straight and make sure we don't hit anything, even though it doesn't really matter because we're not keeping this turd. <laughs> you pry your pressure plate off to either hold your finger in the clutch, use one of your alignment tools to hold it while you remove this so you don't just drop it off. A little bit of heat marks, but it doesn't look horrible, I'd say. Clutch definitely has a lot of life. I'd have to say it's relatively new. Picture bar on the crank, so now when we go to loosen it, this will go to hit the ground or It'll hold against the ground and we can torque it off. And these are on there tight. So I've got them all loose now. It's just a matter of getting it off. They're really, I don't know, maybe there's Loctite or something. I don't think I've ever had any that's been this snug on there. Well, let's check if it's rust or Loctite. Definitely some corrosion. The uh, odd thing is, I don't think this is a manual flywheel bolt. It could be, but that looks a little short to me. There we go. You can definitely see the rear main seal is crying. And someone did not do a wheel pan right. <laughs> Like, oh no, there's no seal, or oh no, there's a leak. Let's just fill it with RTV. That should work. It doesn't work, guys. Don't do it. 
So now that we've got our engine up on the stand, pretty much we're just going to tear it down and get the intake and all of the accessories and little things off so we can kind of check the condition of the engine. And I'm going to order everything that I don't have tonight. So then for our next video, we can be putting this all together and hopefully be dropping it in the car and possibly fixing that fuel pump wiring as well. Let's change our GoPro battery because I see it's getting low and I don't want to have any issues. Let's get to tearing this bad boy down. There's the bracket and there's the harness. We aren't going to use this. We'll just cut it. Heck with it. There's some trash. Pull this balance tube, maybe. And then we're gonna pull our outside coil packs. Now that all of the coil packs are out, before we actually remove the plenum, there's a couple more things we have to remove. This car still has the EGR attached. So that's an issue. We're going to have to disconnect that. EGR is this pipe right here. There's two 10 mil bolts and it comes back here to this EGR valve or solenoid. We'll remove this bracket and both of these brackets on the side that are mounting the plenum for the AIV or the AIV and EGR on the other side. I believe that's right. This coolant hose, this PCV hose, there's another coolant hose here, another PCV hose. Um, I want to say there's one more coolant hose. I think it's this one up here. That'll be your third one. And then your plenum should come right off. Obviously after you hit all eight of your manifold bolts. PCV. Man, that thing's hard. Now that this bracket's loose, it's just held on by some vacuum lines. Get a 10 mil, remove the EGR. This is way easier to do out of the car if it's in the car. Uh, I hope you got small hands, because it's not the most fun thing to do. It's definitely possible. Now that's loose. We're going to go do the same thing to the other side, but first, instead of loosening all these hose clamps for these water lines back here, we're just going to cut them with a razor blade because we're going to delete them. Let's do the exact same thing we just did to the driver's side. It's literally all the same, same location, same bolt size, and let's pull this off. theory this should lift up all right that's good now we're going to pry it up and we're going to cut these hoses on the back There's two coolant lines down here right here and here one here and that one on the corner back here i showed you previously little bracket the o2 sensor that was holding it on that'll do it oh my god and the vacuum hose in the front no, all of it's off. This thing is not gonna mess with me any longer. Oh, that's cool. Smart me just dumped the coolant and that plenum all over that flywheel. Eh, smart. Ugh. It's a little dirty in there. However, there's no oil. I mean, there may be a little up here, I guess, but not a lot. That's good. Keeping this from coming off. This side looks even better. Definitely clean and dry. That one's off. We're going to remove them with this unit. So 
that way it all just stays together and then when we go to cut our new hoses we can cut them to length if we don't cap them now that we have this loose your first priority is getting this hose off remove this all you do is twist it backwards and you pull it over both these bolt holes and be able to pull it outwards and you just feed your BTC through and now we wrestle this hose well that arm took itself off <laughs> this one is off as well so I totally forgot you have this pipe connecting this to your manifold. I can't ever get that off, so we're either going to cut it or we'll just leave this connected to the manifold because we're probably going to swap the manifold anyways, just because these are a little beaten and I got to drill out for the studs anyways. Now that we've got all the extra craziness out of the way, I think it's time to get in and open these valve covers up and see the condition of our engine. Now what is behind valve cover number one? Hmm. Huh? Actually looks pretty good. I am very pleased with that. Smells a little bit like gas, but I usually do. Cam lobes look excellent. I don't know. Yeah, you can just see like the mirrored finish to it. There's no wear on them whatsoever. That's exactly what you want to see when you pull, especially a higher mileage engine apart. What is behind valve cover number two? About the same thing. No, uh, Heads have been replaced or redone at any point in time. These are consistent with each other, so thumbs up for me. Let's go crack all of these loose and pull them off. We can examine our exhaust cams. Let's take a look on our driver's side valve cover. Exhaust cams are looking good too. I'm gonna say it's safe to assume the other side's all right. I mean, yeah, the exhaust side is a little dark. I think we're good here. These cam lobes are looking good too. A little bit dark, a little bit not. You can see it's just kind of brown. It is oil, whatever. We're happy with this one too. So now that we know that our engine's good and we can go through with doing all of our maintenance to put it in our Silver Z, I think I'm gonna call the video here and this is gonna be the end. Um, we're gonna take a checklist right now, find out all the parts we need to order, what we've already got back in stock here, Get the ball moving on this thing. Ready to get it done. I'm ready to get some money up and going so we can start getting some other things rolling too and done and out of the way. And who knows, maybe some more stuff in because you know me. Stay tuned for our next video. We will be tearing this down and hopefully getting this thing running and driving. I know it's a stretch, but we're hoping. That being said, you guys, don't forget to drop a like, comment, subscribe down below. And stay tuned for our next video. And we'll catch you then. Peace.